Hello, my name is Scott Hillier, and in this screencast, I'm going to show you how to create multiple tasks in a workflow for SharePoint 2010. As our example, we have a list here that allows people to request time off and then uh, assigns reviews of that request to multiple people. Let's take a look at this one we have right here, where we have Brian Cox requesting a personal day. And we'll go ahead and edit this item. So you can see that the setup here is that you have a title, which is basically the reason for your request. Then there's a people picker that allows you to pick the person who's making the request. And then there's a review field, which is a people picker that allows you to pick multiple people. So again, the idea here is that you need a workflow where you don't know how many people are going to be involved in being assigned a task. So in this case, we've got three people that need to approve Brian's personal day, Amy, Dave, and Charles. So you can see we also have a task list over here, and the task list is currently empty. So if we come to the vacation request, and then come to the personal day, drop it down, and select workflows, we can click on the approve vacation workflow, and it processes for a second. And then we can see in the task list now there are three tasks, one for Charles, Amy, and Dave. And then if we go in and edit these items, we can have Charles complete his item and save it. And then of course when we go back, you'll see that the workflow is still in progress because the workflow is waiting for all of the tasks to be completed before it progresses. So then we can come in and approve the second one. complete that. And finally the third. And complete this one. And then when I do, we'll go back and now see that the workflow has been completed. And if we come to the history, we can see the outcomes are all task complete inside of here. So again, the scenario here is you're not sure how many tasks that you need to assign when you're designing your workflow, but you need your workflow to wait until all the tasks are complete before it proceeds. So let's go to Visual Studio and see how that was done. So here in Visual Studio, we have our multiple task solution. And the key to creating a multiple task solution is to first design a custom activity that handles a single task assignment. So we have one right here called SP Task Activity. This is a custom activity that embodies multiple standard activities. And you can see that what this single SP Task Activity does is it creates a task, waits for that task to be changed, and if it's changed to completed, then it will fall through to the complete task. So this is a pretty fundamental piece of SharePoint workflow programming, which is the ability to create a single task in a workflow. And we're just going to leverage that idea of creating a single task and uh, use it to create multiple tasks. So let's look at the code that's behind this single task. And we'll see that in the create task, what we're doing is simply coming in and we have a task title, description, assigned to, and percent. So essentially this is a, a very straightforward creation of the task within a task creation method. We also have uh, the activity that's waiting for the task to change. So every time the task changes, this code will run right here. And essentially what we're doing is we're waiting to see whether or not the value of the task has been set to completed. So you can certainly um, designate whatever you want in your tasks to determine whether or not it's completed, but we're simply using the out-of-the-box status here and saying if you set it to completed, then we're assuming you're all done with your task. And then what happens is when the task is marked as completed, then the final task complete activity will run, and we'll simply mark the outcome as task complete. So this is pretty straightforward. When we're in the designer side, we also want to make sure that we set our tokens correctly. So you'll notice that in these we have a correlation token of task token. 
and that correlation token is the same correlation token used for the changed activity and the complete activity. And that's really required because that helps the workflow engine keep straight the fact that the creation and the change monitoring and the completion are all associated with one single task. Now what happens after you create your own activity like this is this activity becomes available for use in your other workflows. So we actually have our multiple workflow, our multiple task workflow here. And if we look at the designer for that, you'll see that within our larger workflow, we have an SP task activity. You'll also notice the locks, which are basically indicating you cannot change these sub-activities inside of this project because they're part of this other activity that we created. But the idea here is to take this activity that we created that knows how to create a single task and then place it inside of a replicator activity. And the replicator activity will run the same contained activities multiple times. So we know how to create one task. Now we just need a list of all the people to create tasks for. And the replicator will take care of running that uh, single task creation. But it will create it for everyone. And you can see that's basically it. It's a pretty straightforward implementation. If we click on the replicator activity, we'll be able to see that within the properties of the replicator activity there are some methods that we want to code. So we're coding the child initialized method right here and we have this initialized one as well. So these are the methods that are going to get created in the code behind so that we can use our replicator. If we take a look at the code that's behind this now we can see that what we do first is we get this call to initialized. And this initialized method is going to create a set of assignees for us. So we've got, if we scroll up, you can see that we're using a list assignees. And this is where we're going to put all the different people. So how are we going to get them? Well, we go to that reviews field that had multiple people in it, and we're just simply going to pull the people out of that and get them into an array list. And then we can get the information about the employee that we're assigning this for and the fact that it's a vacation request approval. So this is what the task is going to look like that gets assigned. So what we're doing is getting all the people that we need to assign task to and then setting up the basic information about what tasks we're going to assign to them. Then, in the child initialized right here, what we're going to do is loop through all the assignees and make the task assign. So inside of here, we just go ahead and get each instance of the person. So the child initialized is going to be called once each for each person and then we're just going to assign them a task based on that information that we had earlier. And so that's really it. There's nothing more to it than that. But again, the key is to create your own activity, custom activity, that knows how to create one task and then place that inside of a replicator and then operate on it as many times as necessary.